So what would an ancient Egyptian scribe suggest for your New Year's resolutions? In this video, we have a list of the top seven recommendations for bettering yourself from ancient Egyptian wisdom literature and autobiographies. So let's jump right in. The first New Year's resolution suggested by ancient Egyptian literature is to listen more to the people around you. Ancient Egyptian wisdom literature and autobiographies are chock full of advice on keeping quiet and listening to others at appropriate times. In the maxims of Tahotep, for example, Tahotep advises his son, quote, if you are a man who leads, listen calmly to the speech of one who pleads. Don't stop him from purging his body of that which he planned to tell. A man in distress wants to pour out his heart more than to have his case won. Not all that one pleads can be granted, but a good hearing soothes the heart. In other words, Tahotep is saying that if somebody is upset, you should hear them out. Whether you disagree with the person or can or can't help them doesn't really matter. What matters is that listening to them will make them feel better. Interrupting them will help nobody. So you're probably sensing a theme here. Tahotep is definitely big on, on hearing and listening. But this is not just good advice for ancient Egyptians, but for anyone out there today who wants to have a greater connection with the people around them and, or even build new relationships. Whether a person is upset or she has good news, nothing will make her feel better than you giving her your full attention and truly listening to what she has to say. The second resolution on our list is to be more grateful for what you have and not be greedy and try to accumulate more. This is another one that shows up a lot in wisdom literature, particularly in the maxims of Tahotep. At the beginning of his instructions, Tahotep advises, follow your heart as long as you live. Do no more than is required. Don't waste time on daily cares beyond providing for your household. Wealth does no good if one is glum. In other words, you could accumulate all kinds of wealth, but if you're unhappy by spending all of your time doing that, there's no real point. Later in the text, Tahotep goes on to give an especially strong warning against greed. He says, to be free from evil, guard against the vice of greed. A grievous sickness without cure, there is no treatment for it. It embroils fathers, mothers, and the brothers of the mother. It parts wife from husband. It is a compound of all evils, a bundle of all hateful things. Tahotep is saying that greed should not only be avoided for moral reasons, but also because it tears apart families and makes people hateful. Instead, we should appreciate what we have, and as he said earlier, follow our hearts. Third on our list is the resolution to do more to help others. Many ancient Egyptian texts, again including biographies and wisdom texts, emphasize helping those who are less fortunate, whether through monetary means or through protecting them from harm. For example, the biography of the third intermediate period priest and official named Neb Neturu advises readers to enjoy life and also warns them against being greedy or stingy. Neb Neturu says, do not be tight fisted with what you own. Do not act empty handed with your wealth. The instruction of Aung Shashank perhaps puts it a bit more poetically when Aung Shashank says, sweeter the water of him who has given it than the wine of him who has received it. Being more giving and charitable is among the most common ancient Egyptian advice, and it's also one of the most common things that officials claim to have done during their lives. The benefits of giving are many, but as Aung Shashank points out, it's even sweeter for the giver than the receiver. Our fourth resolution is to learn something new or otherwise educate yourself this year. Egyptian wisdom texts often advise the reader to read more and study harder. The Middle Kingdom wisdom text called the instruction for King Mary Kare counsels, copy your fathers, your ancestors. See, their words endure in books. Open, read them, copy their knowledge. He who is taught becomes skilled. While a later text called the Satire of the Trades directs, Set your heart on books. There is nothing better than books. Now here at the Dead Speak Online, we do tend to agree particularly with this resolution, and we do love books. You can find a list of recommended reading in all of the descriptions for our videos. 
However, we'd also recommend watching more of our videos, of course, to help educate yourself. But we're biased. The fifth of our ancient Egyptian resolutions is actually one that's among the most common in the modern Western world. That is, to practice moderation in eating and drinking, otherwise known as going on a diet. The satire of the trades warns, if you have eaten three loaves, drunk two jugs of beer, and the belly is not sated, restrain it. When another eats, don't stand there. Beware of rushing to the table. Ang Shashank again comes along and puts it a bit more eloquently and certainly more succinctly when he says, Do well by your body in your days of well-being. There is no one who does not die. In other words, not only should you restrain yourself because it's good social behavior and good for your character in the ancient Egyptian viewpoint, but you should also take care of your body while you're still well rather than waiting until you become sick because you never know what's coming down the line for your health or how long you'll live. Better to face whatever is to come from a healthier starting point. Now our sixth resolution is one that's probably not gonna show up in any top tens of modern Western resolutions, but it should. Namely, to stress less about money and enjoy life more. Now at the beginning of our list, of course, Tahotep has already alluded to this pursuit when he advised not to accumulate more wealth than you need because it won't do you any good if you're not happy. But on the other end of ancient Egyptian history, the high priest of the god Thoth who lived at the end of the late period, named Shishu, recommends enjoying life because wealth cannot prevent death from coming at any time. Shishu advises, drink till drunk while enjoying the feast day. Follow your heart in the moment on earth. No messenger of death takes bribes so as to forget what he was sent to do. Now you probably notice that this is somewhat contradictory with the previous resolution. The ancient Egyptians, of course, were not always consistent in their views over time and from different people, just like modern people today of the same culture do not always hold the same values. However, one can potentially adhere to both of these resolutions by taking care of your body on a regular basis, but then also letting down your hair, so to speak, for special occasions, such as holidays and festivals. After all, having a good time and spending time with your family and friends is also quite important for your health. Our seventh and final resolution is to be more selective about how you spend your time and who you spend it with. Surround yourself with people who are the way that you strive to be. Again, Ang Shashank perhaps puts this most succinctly and clearly when he says, Serve a wise man that he may serve you. The friend of a fool is a fool. The friend of a wise man is a wise man. This is actually pretty common advice in modern self-improvement circles because science has shown that if you hang around, for example, negative people, that you will be more negative yourself. This is because of a phenomenon called social contagion, which basically means that we tend to absorb and mirror the actions and emotions of the people around us. So whether you wanna get ahead in your career or simply live a happier life, you should take a look at the people around you and perhaps reprioritize how you spend your time and who you spend it with. If you'd like to read some of these texts for yourself or just learn a bit more about ancient Egyptian literature, make sure to check out the description for this video below where I have a list of recommended books on ancient Egyptian literature. Now I have a question for you. What's your New Year's resolution? If you don't have one yet, what resolutions are you thinking about? Let me know in the comments below. And make sure to check out other people's comments for some extra inspiration. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.